Welcome back. The new Baz Luhrmann film Elvis is in theaters tomorrow. I cannot wait to see it. It stars Austin Butler as the king of rock and roll and Tom Hanks as his manager, Tom Parker. Kim Holcomb recently traveled to Memphis to chat with the film's major players. Amity, more than half a million people travel to Memphis to go to Graceland every year to come here to the arcade, the oldest restaurant in Memphis, which was also one of Elvis's favorites. It's where he would come to get the famous peanut butter, bacon, and banana sandwich. You know I'm going to eat that. But first, I have to tell you more about this movie because with all of those fans out there, the filmmakers and the cast really want this to be something that they will love and embrace. Take a look. I know you were cast in this role because of your uncanny likeness. <laughs> so, the acting was secondary, you know, I but. Said, I said to Baz, Baz says, I want this to be about the Colonel. I said, I have never seen a photograph of the Colonel. I do not know what the Colonel looks like. <laughs> Who is the Colonel? And then he showed me. I said, mm. you sure you want me? <laughs> I think I'm going to spend some time in the makeup chair. <laughs> well, it and worked. And we did. And okay. you did, yeah. Well, it's like putting on a suit of armor. Everybody says, how'd you, how'd you deal with that? I said, you sit in a chair and you wait. Right. That's all you do. You wait. <laughs> Yeah. And then you go to work and you, and you have half the work done for it. <laughs> so when Lisa Marie Presley is saying, yeah. I had no idea that was Austin singing Young Elvis, I thought it was my dad, what happens in your brain in that moment? I just sort of melt. I, I, uh, I can't even, I, I can't, I, it's hard to articulate what that means to me. Yeah. It, it, it was such a responsibility the whole time, and um, I just feel so overjoyed right now. Yeah, there were, it is fascinating too that you had to go from like young Elvis going into the army to suddenly an older Elvis to yeah, maintain. Yeah. So you had to constantly be switching back between these yeah. parts of his life. What? was the part that you found the most interesting and fulfilling for you to play? Well, the one that I I really envy anybody who got to be in the audience for is those, uh, those moments before he goes to the army and he's at the peak of his animalistic, punk rock, fiery power, yeah. you know? That, like, the, doing trouble, that was one of those moments that, it was so exciting to do. To tell a story that so many people feel like they already know yeah. and they already feel close to, what did you know you wanted this movie to not be? A trope, but also not just a biopic, because I don't think it is. I think it's a film, if anything, more about where we are now and how we got here and about America. And it's, you can't tell the story of Elvis without dealing with America in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, because he's at the center of that one way or the other. But also, you can't tell it without dealing with the issue of race. You can't deal it without the issue of sell and soul. The big seller, the big, you know, waves his arms around, clown clam with a chainsaw, whoa, 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 mm -hmm. roll up, the huckster. Tom Hanks is Colonel Tom Parker. Never Colonel, never Tom, never Parker. Plot twist. <laughs> um, but what I wanted it to be was like the Amadeus is. Amadeus is not just a biopic of Mozart, it's about jealousy. And this, I think, is about the relationship between commerce and art. When you are playing a person mm -hmm. who is a real person, do you do all your research, try to mm -hmm. meet with her, or do you just look at, this is a character on a page, and I am trying to represent no. the character on the page? No, 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 For me, anyway, my interpretation was, hey, you know, there was a way about her, there was an energy about her, you know, she had a softness, she had a vulnerability, she was floaty, but she also had that dichotomy of, 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 of feistiness, of fieriness, which, you know, I think is, you gotta research, she had a, she, I'm Australian, she was not Australian, and she spoke very differently to how yeah. I, how I, how I speak, and I I think there's a different resonance as well where her voice comes from. It's all very technical, but um, yeah, heaps of research, heaps of research. For yeah. And after making this film, do you feel like it was good to be Elvis, or mm. was his life a bit of a Shakespearean tragedy? How do you view it? I think that Shakespeare is Shakespearean is a type of word you did. What he did not experience was a fall from grace because of hubris. Tom Parker was a genius. He made Elvis who he was. He gave rendered Elvis unto the Rock of Eternity. What he did not do is have the artistic vision 
vision in his head to come to this single client of his and said, what statement do you want to make? What story do you want to tell? How can I make those dreams in your head become a ra-? He didn't do that because he wasn't a manager. He was a promoter. And that difference is, I think, how you can say that that's how Colonel Tom Parker did a disservice to this one client by not imagining how truly grand he could have been. Okay. All right, so Elvis opens in theaters June 24th. In the meantime, I've been staring at this sandwich. It's time to dig in. Oh my God, that's good. <laughs> oh, Kimmy, I hope you enjoyed. And it's lunchtime.